Welcome back, y'all, to the Submerged Podcast with Camila and Benji. You are listening to episode two. And if you haven't listened, episode one is already up and running on Spotify and Anchor. Please be sure to share it with your friends and turn on your post notifications. Yes, welcome back to the Submerged Podcast. If you didn't listen to episode one, I'm your father, Camila. Mm-hmm. You are my teenage daughter. That hasn't changed uh, in the last uh, week. And um, also, if you didn't listen to episode one, what we're trying to do here is have raw, refreshing, real, honest conversations, sometimes slightly explicit mm-hmm. um, about all sorts of themes. So whether we're at the surface of it or really deep, we promise to keep you entertained. Today, we're going to talk about um, where me and my father are from, or at least where my mother is from. But I guess, as you would say, a ping pong match between cultures. Um, we're going to hit topics like geography music, food, and culture. My father will be in charge of Seychelles, and I will be in charge of Cuba. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so, Camila, your, your mother is born in Cuba, so abuelo and abuela. Yes. Uh, so, you being born in, in the United States, and then dad being both Seychellois and French, born in the Seychelles, you are uh, an interesting acronym. You are a C-A-S-F, uh, yeah. so a Cuban-American... Seychellois French. Yes, I am. Uh, which, uh, you know, it's a very interesting mix. It is very interesting. You know, uh, and uh, I think we're going to explore that today. Mm-hmm. And then on my side, I'm born in Seychelles. So um, having spent uh, about five years of my life there before we, we traveled and left, but I would be back there every single summer. So we'll talk about those things. I, it's, I think a lot of people um, are aware of Cuba more than they are of Seychelles. Would you say so? I think so. Yeah. Most people always are like, where is Seychelles? Like it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's a quite a unknown country, but a very beautiful country. Yeah, I, I the reactions I've gotten is see what? Say what? <laughs> Seychelles. Seychelles. Um Where is that honey? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then my friend uh, Kenny on the, the the from Seychelles would you know, we'd always joke uh, every single time we'd introduce ourselves and people would get to know us and feel more comfortable about who we are. They're like, You boys from Seychelles come back anytime now. Um, so yeah, that's it. So we'll introduce Seychelles, make sure that people understand what it's all about. We'll talk about Cuba and the ping pong match is pretty much taking a certain theme, whether that's geography, music, uh, food, uh, other things, memories, and we'll Mm -hmm. just go back and forth. So here we go. Yep. Go ahead, Camila. All right. So I guess we'll just start off with basic geography. Cuba's in the Caribbean. If you didn't know, (laughs) it's about a 45 minute flight south of miami Mm -hmm. so um pretty close to the u.s and it's very very (laughs) close yeah it's one big island i think it's the biggest island in the caribbean or maybe in the world i'm not sure but um in the world i don't know but i mean i think that's what mom said oh yeah possibly i think it's the biggest island because it's one whole island not separate islands got it that's why yeah that's the difference between seychelles and cuba i'll let you Got Explain. It. Yeah, and and I, it's true. You forget how big Cuba is, and the problem is it it dwarfs the Seychelles. The Seychelles <laughs> um, are located in the Indian Ocean, mm-hmm. uh, right under the southern equator. Uh, I always tell folks about northeast of Madagascar, mm-hmm. or about find Kenya on the map and then go uh, to the right, and it's about three hour flight from Kenya. Mm-hmm. The the marketing slogan in the eighties was unique by a thousand miles. I really love that. Uh, because really there's bloody nothing around it. There um, is. So we're a group of about 113, sometimes you hear 115 islands. There's about 10 of them uh, that are just pure rock, really serve no purpose. <laughs> uh, no, apart from being beautiful. Yes. Um, but yeah, there's uh, it's in the Indian Ocean, uh, right under the equator. It really benefits from beautiful temperatures because it doesn't really go over 85, 86. It doesn't yeah. go under 75 to 79 and that's in fahrenheit so anybody listening in in celsius you know uh, we're here in the u.s so we're just trying to make sure that we please our crowd (laughs) and um yeah so uh uh, protected i would say and just benefit from this microclimate uh unbelievable unbelievable location very very far away though yeah very long flight very not 45 (laughs) not a total not 45 minutes away but how long was our flight there 
Uh, well, we were leaving from Boston at the time, and yeah. so we did a, a very jump uh, from uh, 45 minutes from Boston to New York. And then... New York, Middle East. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, Dubai, hours, Qatar. Right? And that was about 13 hours. Yeah. Then you wait seven to eight hours at that airport. That that layover was pretty rough. And it was then, pretty bad, especially with the time change. Yes, and it like was. It was like, I think, three in the morning Abu Dhabi time, and it was like... I think lunchtime for us. So we get there, we're starving. We go to this random restaurant, but... I'm, but we're going too digress. far already with digress. memories. I won't digress. But it's okay. We always digress here and that's the point. Um, and then you've you got about a five hour yeah. uh, flight from the Middle East. Over you the ocean. Yeah. You middle can, of nowhere. <laughs> you can get there uh, through South Africa too. Yes, so if ever you did like Atlanta, New York to uh, Johannesburg, Johannesburg, Seychelles, that's about four hours and a half. But yes... About two days flight, you get there and you, you want to kill yourself because you haven't slept. You haven't slept. And then suddenly you're in a rental car and you have to drive on the left because it was a British colony. But we'll move on from that. <laughs> so what's, that, what's the, the next theme coming up? Music. Music. Music is a very big part of our lives, Massive. especially with the cultures that we come from. Yes. But um, obviously the stereotypical music that everybody knows, Cuba listens to salsa um oh yeah so salsa originated from song mm -hmm. and that translated into salsa the puerto ricans think that they invented salsa i'm just gonna put that out there they did not it was don't the hate cubans. on us it's the, it's the truth it was the cubans it was and the cubans. if the hispanics want to come for us in the comments and have a fight about where salsa originated we're not going to listen to you because it originated from cuba i can just i can just hear mark anthony like in his bathroom listening to us and just <laughs> like just <laughs> just having a you know a go you know while he collapses on the floor because he needs a sandwich right they also um created rumba mambo mm -hmm. cha-cha-cha um, so pretty much yeah. all the dances and dirty dancing pretty much all the hispanic dances that people are aware of got it right except for bachata and it's like i'm taking salsa lessons right now because you know i just <laughs> want to be really, cultured i'm just really tapping into yeah. cuban heritage there's nothing to do i don't want to be rubbed up by a hispanic man but then after you go to these salsa <laughs> clubs right digress uh -huh. you go to these salsa clubs and it's like it's always like this four foot nine japanese guy who's got the technique down pretty much like when japs they, they go and do like french food they've got it down art and science they, to the they, tea yeah their the croissants look they're even better than the french because they just work it so hard but yes i digress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th that is that is a lot of uh, of dances that's a lot of music it is i don't think people are aware of that they're not was that a shock to you or or do you no. knowing cubans and knowing the fact that they that that is a huge part of their culture. So was was that a surprise when you found that out? No, music has always been such a like main theme in mm -hmm. my life. I guess mm -hmm. even like not living in Cuba, but I've always been surrounded by music. Whether it was rumba, mambo, cha cha cha, salsa, whatever you name it, I just it's all like what my mother listened to when she was a kid, and she's only listened to really cuban music you know she's not really a fan of other right what is it genres like bachata so it's not a surprise to me you know i feel like we have a very diverse palette of music and, and within and, our culture and so. who are some of these these artists like either past uh or present uh that uh that you're aware of um that have Mm -hmm. You know, not only impacted the, the, the island of Cuba, but then also have brought that sound right, internationally. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the main one everybody knows is Gloria Estefan. Oh, yeah. Her famous song, Conga. I think everybody, Miami Sound Machine. Everybody knows 1980s. that. She brought, she, I think she, for me, I feel like she brought that to the oh, States. Well, she, she did. brought that Cuban mm -hmm. element to the States. And yeah, Miami. her and her husband became an empire. Yeah, really. And, um, Celia Cruz, La Vida es un Carnaval. That Ooh, she's a very song. I love her. She's Azuka. great. <laughs> Azuka. That means sugar. Yes. <laughs> she, and it can mean a lot of things. It can mean actually I need sugar right now for my for my Cuban coffee. Or I need money. Or, or money. <laughs> or I might need some nookie. Yes, this is true. Sex. <laughs> but yeah, Celia Cruz and Gloria Estefan, I think, are the most known mm -hmm. Cuban artists. If you're not from Cuba. Um Buena Vista Social Club. 
Yeah. I think they're the most common group from Cuba. I didn't hear of them till my mom brought them up, but yeah. it's a lot of the original so that, that Cuban is, artists. That's Cuban artists, old school. Yes. Um, there was a documentary that introduced a lot of folks to Cuba and to the Buena Vista Social Club mm-hmm. um, doing classics. Uh, you're talking about guys who um, not only were at the top of their trade back in the day, but also when they did the, the, the documentary, I think, a lot of them were in their 60s, 70s, mm-hmm. possibly 80s. If, mm-hmm. And and each one was like, like master on the piano. This one, the that, this one with his voice. Yes. Uh, you, if you look them up on Google, they all had like specific yeah, roles yeah. in the group. They're like, he was the singer. He did trumpet. No, so, they're but, impressive. Yeah. And it, if anybody wants to check out that documentary, The Buena Vista Social Club, um, it is also a neighborhood, by the way, oh, in Cuba. They don't so, know that. Yep, that's uh, Buena Vista. Mm-hmm. And I think there's one element that, uh, or one group that... Uh, moved to Paris and became super famous named Orishas, mm-hmm. which they mix the son, they mix the salsa, they mix all those genres, but mm-hmm. with hip hop, yes, okay. which I absolutely adore. Yes. And so, and the fact that they, they came to France, they made, they made it big in France and then kind of uh, came back, were allowed back in Cuba or maybe were allowed the whole time <laughs> mm-hmm. to create that cultural uh, exchange. And it, it's unfortunate that it's mostly the Hispanics that know them here in the, in the, in the U S yeah. but they, 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 I don't think they got as much recognition. They're severely underrated, mm-hmm. uh, especially if you're going for modern mixing in with the classic, especially the voice of Roldan. Mm-hmm. He's the main singer. Yeah. Then they've Yotuel, and I forgot what the other guy's name exactly. Um, so, yeah, uh, impressive, impressive lineup there. So, yeah. if, if you are not, oh, before we leave this and go to ping pong it back to Seychelles, you'll miss, come on. Mr. 305. Oh, Mr. Universe. Okay, I feel like everybody... He keeps on moving. He's, he, he, I, for people that know, you know, when he, when he started, it was all Miami local booty. Yeah. He used to do stuff booty with them. Booty uh, What's Super, his name? like, club music. I feel like Pitbull, he's definitely very Cuban, very Miami. Of, he's, I feel like he's the, he's the representation of American Cuban yes. music. But I feel like over the years, he's just become, like, that white girl music that, like, the white girls, like, think that they're... They're, yeah, they're they tapping into the <laughs> Hispanic culture. I'm like, baby, that's not <laughs> and that's and, not and, Hispanic. And the really. very smart thing that, that that Pitbull did was one have the American entrepreneurship spirit, yes. right? Whether it be his own vodka, whether it be with partnerships with Bud Light, he's got other things. Uh, oh no, it, he's in like every commercial. And and, <laughs> and, and, and he is Cuban to the core because yes. he he brings up old school expressions and brings it up and and sometimes says some quite vulgar things very. that he gets away with. Yeah. You know. He goes, he goes, I'm not Home Depot, but give me more wood. But he says that in Spanish. And mm-hmm, he gets mm-hmm, away with people mm-hmm. on the radio. It's like, this is slamming. <laughs> this is banging. And I go, do you understand what he just said? The white people are like, this is lit. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. you're not listening but, uh, to the lyrics. But then I think what he did was, uh, on the music level, was just take old classics from the 90s, uh, possibly 80s, and just mix it into dance. And he jumped mm-hmm. on. What everybody's going to call the, you know, the second Latin wave, the first one you could say maybe was Ricky Martin in that generation yes. in, the, in the mid to late 90s. Mm-hmm. Enrique Iglesias is part of that too. This uh, is true. Miami transplant. And um, so, yeah, Pitbull, uh, massive Pitbull. there. So just yeah. uh, as we can see with music, uh, 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 very uh, domination. Very diverse. Music is a very big part of the Cuban culture. There's always music playing in our house, whether it's mom or dad playing music. There's... Cuban music in everybody's playlist. Correct. It's always Correct. been a connection between families, and when you come together, dancing is a very big yeah addition with it, this music. Dancing is my mother loves dancing. I love dancing. I think everybody loves dancing in this family. Honestly, it's just really fun to just let go and dance with your family. And yeah, wonderful, wonderful times. So going, uh, let's ping pong it back to Seychelles. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. we. You know, the, 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 the Seychelles being discovered by the Portuguese, French colony for many years, then the British took over uh, in 1815. So we've got this uh, Creole language that is a, almost a patois of French, broken down French, that when, mm-hmm. um, when I read a book about the, what had happened during the colonial eras, uh, when the French brought the slaves from Africa... And, and set up tea plantations. So a lot of them learned French on the boat when they were mm. working in the, in, the, in the plantations. But then a lot of them escaped 
into the woods, into the, the mountains. Yes. And then, so they, they had their African, they had their French, and then they developed their own patois, which became Creole. French Creole. And a lot of, uh, you know, Creole broken down. So why I'm bringing this to the music is that uh, uh, Creole became the national language, and they were always singing uh, uh, Creole, Creole music. Mm -hmm. And there's really two kind of genres, mm -hmm. which is Sega, mm -hmm. which is also in the Mauritius Islands, about yes. two hours and a half away, that was colonized at the same time. And then there's Mutia, which is, that's more the original one uh, with, the, with the drums. It's the, the, the slave dance. I would say it's not close at all to capoeira, like in Brazil, mm -hmm. but it has that feel. I it's feel like, like it's a little more upbeat than Sega. I feel like Sega, you can well, slow no, it but, down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but Mutia is more the real expression of, well, we're around a campfire. Yes, We're celebrating our culture. Yeah. And, 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 but still very beautiful, the dances mm -hmm. that go with um, th there's what's interesting then well maybe we can explore this theme a little differently is that you know Seychelles you know like Cuba also a Catholic country right mostly there are other religions but they there's a lot of, of fire mm -hmm. you know everybody say caliente right mm -hmm. hot in, in Cuban music and there's the hip action and all that in Seychelles there's the hip action but there's a distance you keep a distance oh, yeah, from yeah, yeah. your it's like a, it's partner like a, it's like a ritual dance kind of and you kind of like just go in a circle Yes. It's like kind of weird. It's you, and then the girls are always wearing these massive skirts. Yeah, but I remember we did, we did the we did the um, what's it called the the Seychelles stand for the for a French school, and mom bought me the big ass skirt, and I think I lasted like two hours, and I was like, this shit is funky. Yeah, Get me out of this. It no, was, it was cool. And yeah, but the dancing is definitely kind of weird. Like I I don't I don't know why, but it like it makes me uncomfortable. I was like, this is so awkward. Like, well, it's a hip movement, it's, it's but a with a weird. It's almost like. Um, it's almost like 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 no. I'm respecting you, but I still want to like. This is how I'm gonna. No, no, this you. is how I'm gonna describe it though. It's it's almost like a track start and swimming for those familiar with swimming. Oh. But you're standing up, possibly your yeah, foot's yeah, yeah, a little yes, closer, yes, yes. and then you're kind of just moving, in swinging a your hips from the ball of um of of your foot. So if you have uncomfortable shoes, you're fucked, you know. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, you're like tap in, you know, I cramps, you <laughs> yes. know. It's almost like wearing fins it's a whole like practice. It's like an ab like, workout. What? It's like an ab workout a little. Like you're just like yeah. it's like hula hoop movements. But yeah. Then you go Anytime in a circle. I try to get back into it, I'm like, and it's you have like to like I need the girls stretch. have to like hold their skirt up and like a certain angle, so your arm like cramps up True. at some point. So they're just like, and the <laughs> yeah. guy is like kind of like it's <laughs> it's weird, but but yeah. So that's Seychelles, the Sega dance, the Sega and the and the Mutia. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you're gonna hear if you would to look up Sega on Spotify or. Apple Music or other things like that, you, you'll find from, it comes from Mauritius, it comes from the, the, the Seychelles, and it is uh, more upbeat, and it's um, the way to describe the rhythm. Uh, some guy on the guitar showed me once is that if you have kind of a, that uh, kind of slow down reggae beat, Seychelles kind of adds a little kind of, you know, a little more fast reggae style to mm -hmm. it. Uh, and, and that's just for folks that uh, want to pay attention to the music side. Mm -hmm. So leaving the music now, we'll go to the next theme. What's the next theme coming up? My favorite food. Ooh. Well, my favorite too. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Time to chow down. We definitely grew up with some good food. Good we food. spoiled. Okay, We're so talk boy. to me about Cuban food. Right. Okay. Oh, oh, the the, okay. the misconceptions of one Cuban of the, food. When we, the stereotypical Cuban food. Which is, I mean, it's a true stereotype because I think we eat this like every single week. But yes. arroz y frijoles, rice and yeah, beans. rice and beans. Rice and black beans, I think is... Uh, yes. That's my favorite personally, but you can do white beans, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a lot of other things like bistec a la palomia. I've never even heard of that until mom brought it up. Yeah, but it's like a, either... Uh, steak you know, is kind of a big thing, I feel flattened, like. Flattened steak. Yes. They they don't function like the French style. You're not going to find medium rare or rare. Yeah, it's they always well done. cook it. Yeah, well done. Well That's done. why uh, we the make sure Abuelo well. has always a well done piece of meat. This is true. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, they do the pollo empanizado. Like yeah. if you go Breaded. to if you go to La Carreta in Miami, like there's, I think at least 16 options of steak and chicken that you can pick. <laughs> yes. And it's always... But the base, either, the yes. base of rice and, and rice frijoles. Rice and maduros. That's always an yeah, addition that you can What's maduros? Add. Maduros is, well, plantains. Yeah, ripe plantains. Ripe plantains. And, and you, you can fry are, them. I don't, I don't know the difference. So tostones are green, are green plantains. Oh, okay. They're not ripe yet. So what they do, 
the the maduros is real simple it's it's the the the, the, banana, the, the plantain is going to be completely yellow with the black stripes right uh -huh. you take it out you cut it into nice pieces and then and you, you just, fry it you fry it because oil. the sweetness and the deliciousness will mix in well although it's really good it's super greasy part. and like people should not be eating that every day because i think you will get like yeah an infection from the amount of oil that you're inhaling <laughs> no i don't think it's an infection i, I think you start to get the round curves you but get, maybe like, then fat. pitbull shows up at your door like <laughs> but that's a different story um so maduros tostones is green plantains mm -hmm. that you fry you take them out you smash them down yes with the tostones yes. Uh, oh, you know almost like a tortilla but it's it's a tostones uh, it's, it's uh, basically a bigger version of the maduros and, and like a little bit them. different yeah but then you refry yes. so it gives you a crispy... it's a little bit like of a harder outer Correct. layer they both are delicious and i can never tell the difference because i'm usually just shoving it down my throat before like because the maduro is going to be it. sweeter and it's going to most almost have a yeah. dessert type feel yes and it, and it mixes well with the saltiness of the beef or the chicken mm -hmm. or whatever the tostones are a little bit like like i don't know they remind me of just like potatoes like they don't have as much like sweetness they're, they're, they're gonna the, feel a little more starchy like it's it's like sweet potatoes and potatoes i feel like that's like a good like comparison for a difference yeah. like the maduros is like sweet potatoes like it's it's potato but it's a little bit sweeter and then just the tostones are just regular potatoes they're both delicious got it and right? so what and about what about we, so we, we've got that base we've got those proteins we've mm -hmm. got the, the 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 plantain in various forms whether ripe or or, or mature yes. what what about dessert oh flan obviously i think I hope everybody has been able to try flan because it's absolutely delicious. And I feel like every family has a different way of doing it, you know, and restaurants are definitely have a different way of doing it. I like, I never order flan if I'm... Abuela's flan's the best. Yeah, I, that's, I, don't, I feel like there is no comparison. Is, is I think they're too. both very good at making flan, but I feel like restaurant flan, like I can't compare it to Abuela's flan, mm -hmm. you know, but I think it's still good. But like, I, I'll never like voluntarily order flan if I see it at a restaurant because I'm like, you know, I already get this at home. But well, if I'm in Miami, I will always order either flan or tres leche or, um, yeah. But I so just, tres leches, you know. they say, is normally the, the, uh, uh, the original, uh, the, the OG is from Nicaragua. Delish. So the Cubans have taken it. A lot yes. of Latins have. So this, that's a, it's a, it, for those who don't know it, it comes with three different types of milk, you know, condensed, regular, Normal milk evaporated, and, right? Can, yeah, I yeah. think so. And, and the idea is to have this kind of regular sponge cake on top, maybe a meringue, mm -hmm. but then it's been soaked, but it, it has to be just soaked right because yeah. too much of it, yes. it, it, the cake it, will it crumble. drowns. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio, he In abandons you right You're there. dead. Dead. Gross. And, and then... If not, then if it's just the right amount of liquid, it's, it's probably so the best fucking thing. It's ever, my favorite right? cake ever, yeah. you know. And I'm I'm not a fan of cakes with like a bunch of frosting. I find it too sweet. Like, yeah. but like, oh, so good. I mean, and we, if you we, put like a little jam on top of it, like a little raspberry jam on top of it, it's just absolutely delicious. We we've you know? done it in the house. It, it's been successful, I would say, up mm -hmm. to a certain point, or if not, very decent. Mm -hmm. There was once in Miami. Believe it or not, at the Ocean Air, which is more of a franchise around seafood, mm -hmm. uh, we had a lovely afternoon. Um, it was just Abuelo, Abuela, uh, Jadel and I. And then, you know, you guys, I think, were staying at the house. You were much younger. And we ordered Tres Leches, and it was probably the best one that, we, that I've ever had in my life. Uh, I, I haven't, and it was weird. It wasn't at a Cuban restaurant, but it, I'm mm -hmm. sure it was a Cuban in the kitchen. For yeah, sure. definitely. Hands down. There's no way. So let me let me yeah. let me switch uh, to, to Seychelles. Seychelles, obviously, um, I explained the French colony, the the, the British colony. Mm -hmm. That comes with then different types of population, different types of needs, and 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 also we are unique by a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. There are fishery. Our fisheries, yes. people come and abuse our tuna like there's no tomorrow. The Spanish, the, the, the Russians. There's so uh, the much French. fish there, though. And there's so much wonderful fish uh, in the area. Um, there's no time to go into every single quality fish. You just have to go to the fish market to yeah. check it out. So it's a very uh, fish uh, culture. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, with uh, um, being discovered and, and more tourism, we the, the Im importation of beef or chicken from Brazil from South Africa, from Australia and other places that has increased. So then we've got, we do have beef. Yes. There are local uh, production uh, of, of chickens and, 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 and other animals, pigs, but just not enough, obviously, for the whole population. So yes. we, we're, we're reliable imports. But if we go to a classical 
Sichuan dish for me, it is a bourgeois, which is a snapper. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of like cut it uh, across, uh, you know, the fish. You put in uh, some some onions. Uh, you put in some tomato. Uh, you definitely get some uh, bird eye chili. You know, yes. uh, some Thai chilies also would be the same thing. Um, slightly a bit different, but piment oiseau it's called, uh, which is bird chili. Mm -hmm. Super hot. Kind of mix that up. Very oil, nice. salt, pepper, and then it's either you grilled with it. a banana leaf. Yeah. Um, on on top of a grill, mm -hmm. so it's grilled, not fried, and well, then I meant like or stove. cooked in the oven, and then that you pair it up with some beautiful white rice. You can add then either a, a salad, a, a like mango cucumber, salad. tomato, or then the again you salad. add the fruit element. And oh, this is delicious. where, uh, so so that to me is that is quintessential Sichuan, right? Yes. Now listen, yes, we've come in with the barbecue. We got inspired by the Australians. We do wings. We do uh, beef curry too. And then a big deal bringing on the curry is that we have a South Indian uh, uh, population immigration that mm -hmm. immigration that came during the British colony that got they brought their masala. So we do a lot of oh, curries so too, good, octopus bro. curry, beef curry, fish curry. A bunch of curries. Uh, there was, we went to this Indian restaurant there and it was just so good. Like fresh fish and from around us and then just the curries were so good. Well, it what about, was so good. Yeah, well, like, we'll talk about the memories of the fish. Right, I right, mean, right, it's, right. It's, 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 we, you know, on the side of the road, the fisherman comes. Uh, you know, he's had his his catch of the he's got his catch of the day like you find in restaurants. Yes. But it's really the catch of the day. That fish is looking at you like he's a, he his eye is still he, alert. It's still twitching. He's like it's just been two hours, you bastard, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. So, and 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 but guess what? That gives you just this beautiful texture in the fish when you cook it. It's unreal. And then so going to desserts that what we really were limited i would say from a sugar perspective where cuba had, was known for its molasses trading its mm -hmm. sugar cane we have sugar cane, but we just don't have enough land mm -hmm. right mahe is only 27 by 12 kilometers yeah. long i believe and it you know there's just not enough land to produce but the good news is that we'll use every single bloody fruit so we take oh, a yes. plantain so let's use the plantain connection we'll take a plantain we will either Either do the maduros, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe sprinkle some sugar just to add a little, you know? Right, yeah. Or we will um, cook it down slowly with coconut milk, vanilla extract, uh, vanilla bean, which is oh, fresh yes, from yes, Seychelles. Yes, yes, yes. And then that becomes la dobe, la dobe banane. And la dobe banane, we do it oh with my sweet gosh, potato. I remember this. We do it with potato. Yes. Um, oh my God, so good. You know, uh, it, 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 so that becomes our, our desserts. There are other desserts that the Indians have brought in. Uh, very sweet, but I would say that's more typical Korean. What was the what was the dessert that the lady that we rented the house from? She did la dum. Okay, that was just so good, yeah. bro. She mi so well, I, I think she mixed she mixed the the plantains. Yes, it was. With, I remember it being uh, plantains. a type of a sweet potato, but more malanga like bonito salad. You would yes, say that yes, the Cubans yes. for Cubans, and and it was so it was unbelievable. Good. So just some, I think the point is we're talking about when you're on the islands. It's fresh stuff, right? It, 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 um, when it comes to the fish, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Cuba also has a ton of fish that's absolutely Definitely. beautiful. Different style, more uh, more the white type fish, but still, yes, absolutely slamming food. Um, and we encourage you to, to. We're very spoiled. To check it out. Come over. Yeah. Share some food with us. So, what's the next uh, next theme as we move along, Camila? Well, culture. We could talk about how we both grew up within this culture and mm -hmm. kind of the stereotypes that come along with it and also a little bit of the history. That, sure. Because I feel like people don't really no. know about the history of Seychelles, but also Cuba. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't okay, know. Okay, so until. What, what are some pointers you think that, that people would be interested in or you found curious about, about culture in general? Well, Cuba is basically the combination of the Spanish conquistadors that came and the black slaves. Mm -hmm. So I think that our culture is a very, very big combination and just like in that. And Cuba is very diverse with the type of people that are there. Like you could be black, white, a redhead, blonde, freckly. You could be a Jew, like literally super diverse. There's even a, there's even a Cuban Chinatown. Yeah, yes. You this know, is true. Like, There's a Cuba Chinatown. Barrio Chino. Yes, yes. That, that was free. That was weird. I found out that a little weird. I was like, that's interesting. I won't, I won't do any imitation, but it, it, it's Chinatowns <laughs> everywhere. But it's like, yeah, yeah. Listen, I've been to Chinatowns in France. 
I've been to Chinatowns in Montreal. I've been to Chinatowns in Boston, in San Francisco. I just, I would never LA, like, and I just find it weird. Like, and, thinking then, and of then, them then when I went to language. see like a Chinatown queue, I was like, of course they're here. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know what? They're resourceful too, and they're awesome because they got both. It's 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 mm-hmm. a double hustle. Yes, double. Yes, double. Cubans are already so like hustlers, like making money. You know, like super passionate people. They're so loud. Yes, they are. So loud. I think mm-hmm. if you came over to our house and you sat down, honestly, a stereotypical a normal day for us when family comes over, we have a massive lunch, whether it be normal Cuban food or just like whatever we feel like eating. And then you sit there for four hours and you just listen to the adults and like whoever wants to talk in the conversation really for four hours, you're just getting down and dirty with details, either it's family drama, it's politics, life, anything. And it's just like agree to disagree. And it's really scary sometimes, you know, like I'm like 15 and like I guess I'm I'm gr- you, you I'm grown get, you get like I don't get scared but I'm like yeah, damn like they are screaming at each other and I'm just like can we not scream it's, and they're just like we're not screaming and then no, it's a normal it's a normal thing and they use a bunch of hand gestures so it looks well, like they're about to like punch you in the face sometimes like yeah. and it doesn't help that maybe the emotions we're a very emotional family a very emotionally open so it doesn't help that the emotions come in as well sure so very passionate culture oh and let me just add there's always cuban coffee there's always a cuban coffee break well that doesn't and help that's when it goes like right back up to I, like I, I, peak we we, we talked we talked the other day um i um i drove uh, a couple of kids from the high school swim team and coming down to miami where you had your was it regional 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 championships and i don't think the kids had been there and so no. we wanted to give them the full experience we left early so we could have a a wonderful lunch at the islas canarias shout out to them and that was the typical, you know, rice Cuban, and beans, yes. a steak, a chicken, whatever they, they deserve. And and so none of them had had the Cuban coffee. I was like, hey, guys, you know, let's let, let's have some Cuban coffee. And then one kid that was there. Uh, Sebastian, Sebastian, shout out to shout you. Shout out to Sebastian. He, uh, he had a best time, I think, by seven seconds. But he I went think out it was like 10. way too fast in the first uh, 100. He did keep it together. But I think that Cuban coffee was like jet fuel for it him, went right? straight up his ass the <laughs> rocket went straight up his was, ass he went what did he, he go like 155 NASA. yeah 155 or 157 but Something i think like he, that. he went out in a 55 which was just um he was blazing and uh, he was just being silly with it and yeah i guess the the, the it was the really cuban, funny cuban coffee is jet fuel yes um and then as i said going back to your <laughs> proceed with, with caution proceed with caution because then it'll get you more animated oh my god might, might make you more passionate or possibly get into a fist fight sometimes i have to walk away because it's just it's so loud and i'm like you know what yeah i think it's enough for today and then so just to contrast with seychelles it, it you know we as I said, like the Cubans, I think, like the Brazilians, where I would just call a rainbow nation because we are completely mixed. You mm-hmm. have all uh, gradients of, of white, all gradients of Creole, mix, mulatto to dark. Um, and But at the same time, I think we're a much more laid back kind of Rastafarian type You guys are vibe, like right? chill, just party. Like <laughs> I'm trying to dance, drink and eat. While the Cubans, they're like that, but then... Yeah. There's family they drama. They need a little more. They need a little more, like, no, listen, emotion they with can it. Be, they, can be, they can be drama. In, no, they're super fun. Super fun people yeah. to party with, but it just it, it becomes a little bit too much at one point. Yeah. You're just it, like, it, okay, we're, well, listen, we're stepping in, lines In Seychelles, here. there are fights, too, at the end of the night, but it tends to be because people have tends, had yes, too much, too much to say brews, which are beers, and then there's bottles flying. So to get that, pa- the, I think... I would say if there's four levels, you know, the Cuban's already at number three, the Sichuan's at one, Mm -hmm. but then as the night progresses, Mm -hmm. he can get to three and it just, it doesn't look good. Uh, You know, it's not a good look. Well, the Cuban, you can expect he's going to be right from the start. Yes. Like you, like, you know what you're walking into and like, you need to mentally prepare yourself. I think like an hour before it's like, okay, we're about to walk into this (laughs) shit show. We need to keep our shit together. We can't get into a fight with Cuban people because that's it. That's the end. Yeah. You know, you've caused problems when they start talking really fast and start like looking at you in the eyes, which by the way, I, if you don't I, look you know at them I in think, the eyes when you argue with them, I, I you're think freaked. I think with the, with the Cuban before you just get into their house, you should figure out. I'm like, 
one uh, how many how many coffees have they had i wish there was like you know a watch that they, i was like oh he's on two i'm like we gotta proceed with <laughs> caution with this bitch uh, and but then after that it's like how much rums too because we talked about oh, we talked true. about food but this is one place where we share a lot in common due to the sugar cane mm-hmm. now the from the production level very different mm-hmm. but uh cuba cuban known for rum. their rums right yes right cuban L- rum and coke that Cuban. is a classic in no, our what's household. The na- what's the name of the drink? I don't know. I forget. Cuba Libre. Oh, yes, yes, ah, yes, 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 yes. There you messed up your research because that is probably the most important. So that's just a rum and coke. Abuelo with is a squeeze always of, having uh, those. With a squeeze of lime. And unf- it's, it's really unfortunate because I've tasted a, a few and we'll talk about the memories. But um, there are others that you just cannot mm-hmm. get uh, simply due to, to the, uh, the, the embargo. Uh, so hopefully when they do open up, we can get not only the more mm. cigars for me, but also yes. the rum. But in Seychelles, I'm really proud because in 2003, I believe, uh, Takamaka, shout out to Takamaka. Uh, they created their mm. own their own brand uh, of rum and it is kind of nice and smooth. It's actually like, okay, I don't want to like, like it, right? I don't want to throw my parents under the bus for letting me try alcohol. But yes, they've let me try it. It's very good. I'm yeah. like, I like, you know, like I'm not a drunk alcoholic but for being 15 and like i think like like my friends i would go crazy for that you know like at a party but like you know like it's not really known well obviously consume with moderation everybody i feel very very you're making me sound like i'm an alcoholic no you're not you're not you're not but but we're yeah i've i've had it and it's it's very good in comparison to like other alcohols that they let me try i think that's definitely in my top and the good news about takamaka is that there are uh, it's available in other places of the world the middle east the uk you can we can import it from the uk it's very expensive so mm. i'm doing it maybe once shipping twice a year shipping is so expensive shipping is so expensive um and um how many how many bottles did we bring back when we went to seychelles <laughs> oh okay hold on when we went to seychelles i remember i was 10 when we went to seychelles so, so wait, wait, but wait before we say so now let's talk about the memories yeah and, and let's then I'll, let, and I'll let's connect be, it let's here. be very specific here is that I went to Cuba in 2003, 2004 with I have your not mom, been able to go. but you, you, were, you weren't born yet. Right. <laughs> and, yes. and, but, but we did all go to Seychelles in mm-hmm. 2016. I, so let, let's talk trips. about the memories. What do you remember? What can I also clarify for you? Mm-hmm. And then same thing, I'll give you a piece of Cuba. So go right. ahead. What are so, your memories of that trip? Well, I was 10 and I remember we had, I think like 17 suitcases that we were taking. How long were we there? Like three weeks, about three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So three weeks. Um, it was a very long trip. I just, it was really long. That's all I remember. I don't remember a lot from the airports, but I do remember that I dyed my hair before I went. I dyed it purple. And I was like, I am about to look like the swag white girl. And these people don't know what they're going to be able to do with me. So I remember we go and we show up and I remember being so jet lagged. I was up for straight 24 hours you yeah, know like for actually. for being on a um economy like class on the planes those planes treated you good like you were eating breakfast lunch and dinner like it was well, we it was took a great Etihad experience Airways that took us from new york to abu dhabi shout yeah. out to them they great experience they, great experience uh you know uh, but unlike still. some long trips that we've taken on whether it be delta or american where it's yes like, yeah, here's yeah. a piece of ham <laughs> shove it up your i'll see you later you're like what <laughs> Uh, you know, if you've experienced international travel, it's like yes. these guys are like the chocolates. They were took flowing. care of you. They took care of you. And the alcohol was free. You know, even though like the they took really good care of you, we were still dead by the time that we got yeah. there. And our friends that we went with, um, I think they arrived a couple hours after us. And I remember my mom was like, "You need to stay awake." And I just remember wanting to kill myself by the pool. And everybody was swimming in the pool. And I was like, "There ain't no way I'm getting in the pool. I'm gonna fall asleep yeah. if I get in the pool." If you're coming so, from the yeah. US, it's a, it's a rough arrival. Very rough. Um, but then, but then, when you do arrive and it's you're so in this unique by a thousand miles place, describe the 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 atmosphere. Describe what you remember the most, um, and 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 the beach. what was a key memory for you there? Well, well, Kenny, your friend Kenny is my godfather. So I remember. Well, I guess that was I, that wasn't the first time I met him. He had met me when I was a baby, but I think that was the first time I like mm-hmm. had memories of him and stuff. So that was really nice to me. And that was the first thing I remember. And your brother, Arthur, I remember mm-hmm. that was the first time I like got to actually like see his face in person, you know, like not when I was a baby. So that was nice to um, meet familiars that I'd heard so many stories about. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's what I remember most, the, the airport arrival and everything. Um, 
And then the beach. The beach. That was right. really fun. We drove with Kenny and he stopped us at a beach and um he we just we just ran out. It was so pretty. I just remember I was like, Oh, let's go. We're here for three weeks. Let's get hype. And we went to the house and I was like, damn, this house kind of bougie. Because it was like, what was it? It was a newly it, made house and they incorporated the No, it the wasn't huge, newly made. It, it, wasn't it, it newly made no, though? No, it wasn't a newly made. It was, it was an older house. Not older. Older is the wrong word. But let's it's say that they had Seychelles. renovated it a bit. But what was unique about there it? There was the rocks, the big boulders that they had there. Seychelles was formed from a volcanic mm -hmm. explosion. And then they have these massive rocks, which I think have a ton of energy to them almost like lost if you've seen that series yes and then this house was constructed around pretty much around a rock like that went all the way from the bottom floor to the to, to the, the master bedroom where the kids also, were staying no but also uh, you, you 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 could touch the rock while you poop no yes, no no yes, not, you yes. were a bit far but you could see <laughs> the rock while you poop and also when you showered so that rock was present everywhere bringing a lot yes, of energy yes, yes. to us And we would we would uh, you know touch it every single day to to, to get that energy mm, and those positive would, vibes. Me and my mom would we I remember I put my bikinis on the on the rock because okay. the the bathtub in our bathroom was literally around the rock, so we just throw our swimsuits on there to dry them. So yeah. that rock um, was the mother of the and trip. And so what what trip out of out of that three weeks? Um, obviously. Mm -hmm. Seychelles is surrounded by beaches and yes. sometimes you have a Robinson Crusoe effect where you, you're you're by yourself but what um what adventure um, was the most appealing to you I would say that my favorite one was when we took those the boat to Pralin la Digue but honestly my favorite experience was going to that that pizza restaurant what oh, was it Jesus. called what was it called Baobab Baobab oh my gosh we have some memories like I just remember it was a long day at the beach and we're just at the house and everybody's like, where are we going to so go you, eat? You, you were correct was, about your assessment of your love for food. Yes. And dad was like, we're going to Baobab. And everybody was like, what the hell is Baobab? And we go and it's a restaurant literally on the beach. Like they got, they don't got no floor. It's, it's just the it's sand. Sad, sad. And I just, it was just so fun. It's, it's you know, just brick like, oven pizzas, real simple, Neapolitan yes, style. Uh, that's kind like of my bread. favorite. Um, Interesting. Okay, so that's and your... you brought up a lot of memories about going to Baba when like you were like a teenager and you would come visit and you'd go with your friends after. It's these... a classic. So it was so nice to go and you just like eat and then you just drive home, you chill, and then but yeah, the La Digue was really fun. We got so to for bike. people you need to explain. You need oh, to yes. be a little this more specific. Is, if Seychelles is 113 islands, uh, uh, Mahe is the main island. The capital is called Victoria for the Queen. Remember mm -hmm. British colony. You have Pralin, which is the second main island, about a 15-minute puddle jump from Mahe or one-hour boat ride. It was ride. an hour boat ride. It was a horrible uh, boat ride, by the way. We were well, all about to puke. Well, you need to understand that the, the epoch, the time that we went, was, very, was, uh, yeah. was the seas are rougher. If yes, you go yes, in December, yes. it's a smooth ride. Yeah. So um, the Pralin is that, and then La Digue is the third island. And yeah. let's finish off on your side with La Digue. Um, what's special about La Digue? Come on. Well, the most photographed yes, beach in the world. Yes, I was just world. about to say, it was the most photographed beach in the world. And Which also is like, called Anse Source d'Argent. What yeah. he said. Yes, I don't exactly. remember. But um, we, what was fun about that was there were not really many cars. Mm -hmm. And we just got to bike around the whole island. Yes. And that was so fun. And then we parked our bikes. And I actually have a picture of us sitting at a little smoothie bar, organic, like fresh fruits from the trees and they made us smoothies and we're all sitting in a row yeah, that's a good picture. and that's uh after that's after we went to the beach and we just got to walk around going to like different little private beaches and we got to jump off those huge rocks and walk in again those, ro those rocks so are that, everywhere yes the rocks are everywhere but that was so fun like i that's like for being 10 years old i don't remember much about being 10 years old mm -hmm. but um that is like my number one trip i think for everybody and i feel like Our phones, yeah, our phones didn't work. There was n absolutely no Wi-Fi, and I felt so like disconnected, like from all that stuff. But like, that's a good, like, it was a good thing. I mean, I there is like there is Wi-Fi in the country, uh, but sometimes uh, for, it, for folks like, that are not on resorts like we were, you can purchase, uh, 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 you know, data and Wi-Fi. the The issue is <laughs> with ten people in the house. It ran it out ran within out 24 hour, hours. Literally. But uh, when the sense of panic instills for, for about 24 hours, then everybody kind of forgot about their phones. We kind of just like, we were like, everybody YOLO. started, uh, you know, at night sharing stories. 
you okay you, you guys did watch madagascar 3 we, like oh my four gosh that was the times. only was movie oh, no, yeah, what every day that was the only movie that works in that old dvr i like to so move, it, we, move it. yes i like to move it move <laughs> every day we would watch that movie and we'd blast that song at the mm-hmm. end and we'd just dance yeah and yeah i feel like the i feel like that was like my favorite trip only because i feel like everybody was having like conversations you know like without the technology i didn't have a phone but it was just nice like and everybody's phone uh storage ran out of a bunch of storage because we were taking so many pictures yeah and um, but that was great because yeah. people like did get uh did relax so we, we i i want to be very conscious of time camila uh, mm-hmm. and our audience but just to finish off on, on my side uh, uh, we went in 2003 2004 before you were born um So you mentioned in the beginning of the of the the podcast the forty five minute flight. Mm-hmm. You you fly forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. You land, and then the way I've always described it, the the impression I had, it was like they uh, took a snapshot of Miami in the forties and fifties and kind of just walked away, because <laughs> due to the 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 restrictions, the embargo, and and everything else happening, this is not a political show. We're not going to try to be, but guess what? When you don't touch infrastructure and there's not enough investment, things and communism uh, get decrepit. Things fall apart, right? Mm-hmm. And so that was one beautiful to see, shocking to see. Um, uh, you know, the the interactions with folks was was very different um, uh, than I think that anybody would experience in in, in the U.S. or in or mm-hmm. in Seychelles. Um, so I would say, just unfortunately, the years created a different breed of human being. Um, but that doesn't mean there wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, the, as I said, the food was, uh, when we had it in-house, it was excellent. Not so much in the hotels. Um, it was December, January, so a little cooler on the beach, but there was an, an area called Baradero, which is uh, kind of a peninsula um, about an hour and a half from, from uh, Havana. And that was absolutely gorgeous. That did remind me of Seychelles. I, I connected mm-hmm. there. I even jumped in the water, even though it was cooler. Um, and I wish that almost... We could have had a beach house and stayed there. You know that was my, mm-hmm. and not saying that Havana wasn't impressive. As I said, the 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 older neighborhood that's more the Spanish type neighborhoods, the Barrio Chino, the Malecon, and all these these landmarks, they are impressive. But it's just everything at the time was just difficult, difficult to get there, difficult to hear. The logistics are not the same, mm-hmm. right? And then guess what? Everybody knows you're in their neighborhood. So suddenly there's 20 people showing up at the house every night. Like, It's a party, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you green girls are here. <laughs> um, and then you have to explain, well, actually, I'm French. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, it, I would say, you know, my favorite part was just to observe, you know, observe the folks, observe the people. Um, and also, I think one of the, my memories was going out and talking to different people from different generations who had an interpretation a wide interpretation of what it was to live in Cuba during these last 40, 50 years. Um, and then, I, you know me, I like the old people because they got mm-hmm. stories, right? Yes. Whether they're dirty, whether they're fun, mm-hmm. whether, whatever. And so I would just go and um, go buy a ton of beer, which was quite expensive. It was $1 per beer for them. So I'd just buy like a six-pack, 12-pack, and I'd just go sit down while they're playing dominoes and I'd distribute the beers to the old guys and mm-hmm. we'd just get slammed. Mm-hmm. And then and then they were offering like rum and like almost like milk cartons. So we'd also <laughs> drink that. So by, I was pretty much drunk every single day, let's be very honest, because we had we to We were fig- drunk in Seychelles too, though. We, it was fine. Yeah, like- but it was different in Cuba. You kind of had to forget, you know, like get mm-hmm. into it mm-hmm. and um but talking to those people is really fun the 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 beer that i remember was called bucanero which is kind of a buccaneer mm-hmm. you know the here at the mm-hmm. tampa bay mm-hmm. buccaneers um bucanero and yes due to my inebriation and and my vivid imagination i wrote a whole song about the bucanero oh, because he was on he was on, <laughs> he was on the, the, the fucking can mm-hmm. so i wrote a whole song about him and i got the whole family to sing it <laughs> Oh and and I think that was during New Year. So I got them. And basically the song, if I oh remember God. well, it, 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 and I'll translate, it was just saying, it was basically my my ode to the Bucanero saying, you know, Bucanero, I'll follow you wherever you go. You've, bring, you've brought us through, What the you hell, know, bro? land and sea. And, and we love you, Bucanero. Of course you would make this up. You would have, you, I, I got all the kids to sing the chorus. It was oh insane. Oh, my God. So that, that, that's my memories of Cuba. So, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, we're running out of time. I think, it, listen, we, we filled up a lot of time just talking about three or four themes. I think we could have continued we forever. We could honestly make a second episode about this. And if you we guys want to hear that, let we us will. know. 
I think there's more to explore here, and there I think is. the symmetries of these two islands uh, uh, and and the non symmetries is interesting, mm -hmm. um, and how uh, based on geography or where you're at, how it got influenced and how things change, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can talk about that stuff. So, we we wanted um, to conclude today, even though it we are digressing it's on, a little on this bit conclusion, random, but but it's important to bring up. It's I a think very needed update. It's a very needed update. So on episode one, if you did listen. We talked about otters, mm -hmm. right? The episode is called Otters and Tings. So we talked about otters, but we also talked about, uh, in odd news about David Bennett, who got a GMO uh, pig transplant. We made, we made jokes, but we also uh, looked at ethics yes, of, we did. Of, of, uh, due to his uh, history. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in memoriam, uh, David Bennett uh, passed away uh, this week. Yes, he did. So, um, you know, uh, shout out to him. Hopefully, he's in a, he's in a nice place. Obviously, you know, shout out to his family. Uh, hopefully the other family that was, who was aggrieved, they feel at peace. Mm -hmm. But more important is, where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he in Chicharron heaven? Is he he's in, in pig, pig heaven? heaven? I think he's in or pig heaven. where is he? Is, I think he's in pig he's heaven. He's happy, right? Though he's happy. I think he's happy. He's happy. I think, but if you read the article, he knew that. He was terminal with the disease yeah. that he had the heart disease. So he it knew, was, it was he knew the consequences. It was a gamble. Yes. He knew the consequences that was going to come with getting the pig transplant. Right. And I think, I think he's at peace with himself that he knows that he, he made a difference in the world. Yes. yes. He listen, he tried. <laughs> they tried the genetic modified. Now, listen, there's a big question. If it, they'd given him a regular pig heart, because they, they have used pig uh, valves before because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's closest to the human. Was the genetically modified? Did that did that make a difference? I mean, I, there's also a lot of questions here. That, but most important was to say to give him respect. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, David Bennett. And then um, just to let you guys know, on the otter update. Yes. One, the baby was chilling the other day. I caught it on camera, so they're mm -hmm. still hanging out. We haven't seen the parents yet, so the baby is getting a little too comfortable. The baby is experiencing his individualistic ideas. There he is. He is becoming. A man. Wait, is, is it a he or she? I don't uh, want to gender. We don't know. Gender, we don't know. Um, what's it called? There's no gender reveal in this order. Yes. We don't know what it is. But then if you look at a BBC article that came out today mm -hmm. um, due to, again, deforestation or uh, other man-made uh, um, events, uh, there was a whole romp of otters. Romp is when they come together. So yes, like, yeah, you know, like, like a school of fish. Together, of fish. Exactly. Yeah. So the romp of otters, love that name, they just... Uh, the, the, the policemen stopped the traffic and they let the otters like cross the street. I was like, you know how dangerous these fuckers are? I'm like, what? you didn't listen to our episode one? We told you they're the X-Men of the, <laughs> the sea. And, I'm like, and now you're letting him on, on cross the street. You, you're, you're teaching him pedestrian habits. We are so woke. What's wrong with you people? Why are you? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, thank God they had no rocks on them. They, they were protecting their kids. It was a long life. Well, we don't cute. know if they had the rocks on them. It was cute. But I'm just saying, Singapore, watch out. I'm like, <laughs> you, I, I want you to film crazy Asians too. Crazy rich Asians too. Yes. You know, he's like, hey, you know, shout out to that crew. That was a great movie. And um, we yeah. digress again, but we're going to end today. We want to thank yes. everybody. Camilla, what do we want to say? Um, thank you for listening to um, our podcast. We hope you're enjoying it. And um, yeah, episode three will be coming out next Sunday. And if you haven't listened to episode one, be sure to check that out on Spotify and Anchor. Turn on your post notifications for us. It's a little bell next to our mm -hmm. logo. And um, follow us on Instagram at Submerged Podcast. I will be posting a lot of updates and Stupid pictures of us and whatnot. And no, yeah, yeah, maybe some uh, Seychelles, Cuba yes, um, pictures. Yes, I definitely will be uploading Wonderful. Those. Well, thank you, everybody. We, uh, we really appreciate your time, your support. We look forward to uh, uh, interacting with you on the next podcast. Thank you very much. Peace.